Hello everyone, my name is Elena. I'm a member of the Globalization SIG in Open Euler community. We plan to do a series of mini course videos. In these mini courses, we will be sharing some tips and knowledge about the Open Euler OS and hope you will find them helpful. Today, in the first episode, I'm going to talk about K-Dump, a kernel crash dumping mechanism. Have you ever wondered what would happen if a sudden crash occurred while a system was running? Of course, you'd first try to fix the problem using the temporary protection mechanism watchdog or something similar. But what's next? Well, it's also important to copy the memory image of the crashed environment to the file system. That way, we can then debug the dump file to find the cause of the kernel crash. A variety of crash dumping solutions have been developed over a period of time, such as Linux kernel crash dump, mini kernel dump, tough dump, and eventually K dump. K dump provides a reliable dump generation and capturing mechanism. It is simple, easy to configure, and provides a great deal of flexibility in terms of dump device selection, dump saving mechanism, and plug-in filtering mechanism. K-Dump supports x86, x86-64, ARM, ARM-64, PPC, S390, and various other architectures. The K-Dump involves two kernels. The first kernel or production kernel is the kernel we normally work with. The second kernel or capture kernel is the kernel used for collecting crash dumps. When a kernel crash occurs, the K dump uses Kexic to boot into the second kernel and creates the memory image VIM core that can help us determine the cause of the crash. Here's a diagram to better explain. Kexic is a mechanism of the Linux kernel that allows a new kernel to be booted from the one currently running. The difference between a standard system boot and a Kexic boot is that the hardware initialization, normally performed by the BIOS or firmware depending on architecture, is not performed during a Kexic boot. This can save developers a lot of time. Kexic consists of two components, kernel space and user space. The kernel space implements a system call Kexic load, which facilitates the preloading of a new kernel. This new kernel can be executed later by reboot. The user space, called Kexic tools, loads the second kernel and reboots to the loaded kernel in case of a system crash or panic. So how does this whole K-Dump thing work exactly? First, the production kernel reserves a chunk of memory. Second, the capture kernel is preloaded in the reserved memory. Then, a kernel oops or panic occurs. So the system boots into the second kernel and the system creates a process vimcore file which indicates the memory image of the panicked kernel. Then copy vimcore for future analysis. Next, reboot to the production kernel. Finally, analyze the vimcore file. Next, I'd like to share some basics of KDump on Open Euler. KDump is installed on popular Linux operating systems by default so that we can execute scripts to use KDump service. To start, stop, or query the status of KDump, use the following command system control start stop status KDump. On Open Euler, there are two KDump configuration files. One is etc. KDump configuration, where we can use path, variable, crash to specify the directory storing the vimcore file, and use keep old dumps to specify the number of vimcore files to store. Keep old dumps 1 indicates only the vimcore of the latest panic is stored. The other configuration file is etc. system configuration kdump. In this file, the kdump command line append option appends argument to the current command line. 
Let's watch a demo of how K-Dump works on OpenEuler. Okay, we saw how K-Dump works, but the question now is, why is it necessary to have K-Dump installed in a Linux environment? Well, first, K-Dump is flexible because dump is captured from a newly booted kernel. It supports network dumping to a wide range of devices, including local drives, NFS areas, CIFS shares, or FTP and SSH service. It's also highly reliable. The crash dump is captured from the context of a freshly booted kernel, but not from the context of the crashed kernel. What's more, kdump is efficient. We can fit out extraneous pages and compress the dump, and so handle large dumps in a short time. Lastly, it's easy to use when writing dumps over a network. We can use existing file system facilities to share dump space without special preparations. Like any other solution, KDump also has its limitations. First, KDump cannot be used for issues that occur before KDump is initialized, for example, for early boot problems. For such cases, you will have to use a standalone dump tool. Second, Devices are not shut down or reset after a crash, which might result in driver initialization failure in capture kernel. Third, non-disruptive dumping is impossible. Well, that's all the basics of the K-Dump I want to share with you today. We will do more similar technical presentations, so stay tuned for more. Bye for now.